escaping from the cold, Habitat for Humanity, and Metro Community. These are social service organizations that help the vulnerable, the poor, and the homeless. Now I want you to imagine a world where organizations like these do not exist. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Lenz, and I'm here today to talk about nonprofit sustainability. On the agenda today, I will go through my decision statement and research objectives before following with my methodology, my findings, and my conclusions and recommendations to my client, the Scotiabank Center for Nonprofit Excellence, before we have a brief question period at the end. But before we start, what is nonprofit sustainability? We all generally know what sustainability is. It means to last or exist for a long time. But what does existing entail as a nonprofit? Well, that's a three-parter. An organization is about impact, making an impact in the community, but also remaining accountable to that impact. And third, remaining accountable to their mission, which are their purpose. Therefore, to be sustainable, a nonprofit must continue to achieve its mission going forward. When I began this research project, I was working with quite a bit of data because last year, Amanda Wright, who was in this room, had conducted a rather large research project at the board and executive level of nonprofit organizations. Because I did not want to replicate her study, I focused mine at the staff and volunteer level, which is the lower end of the hierarchy. The question I wanted to answer was what barriers would prevent a nonprofit in our community from sustainably achieving its mission? This led to four areas that I needed to address, which included human resources, financial resources, organizational culture and structures, and mission-related activities and programs. Due to my limited time today, I'm only going to be focusing on human resources and organizational culture and structures. I answered these questions by using a primarily qualitative, no, sorry, quantitative research study because I wanted to create a detailed assessment of the data I was collecting. But I also wanted to get an idea of the perceptions and the understandings of nonprofit sustainability, so I added a supportive qualitative element all of which was conducted through an online survey instrument. This survey yielded 52 responses from volunteers, staff, and managers within nonprofit organizations. This can be considered representative of the population with a 45% <coughs> allowable error at a 95% confidence level. First, in human resources, I looked at three main variables. The first was adequacy of feedback. The second, was staffing levels, and the third was training and development. The first, adequacy of feedback, I assessed by asking my respondents whether they got enough feedback. And I got a wide range of responses. Management is 100% satisfied with their feedback, but only 82% of staff and a mere 42% of volunteers said the same. In order to assess staffing levels, I asked two questions. The first was to check whether they were being understaffed, and the second, whether they were being overstaffed. To assess understaffing, I asked whether their workloads were manageable. If the score was too low, it would indicate that they were understaffed. However, the score was fairly high. To assess overstaffing, I asked whether they had enough work, and here the score was also very high, with my respondents saying that they always had enough work. Interestingly, a score this high might actually indicate understaffing because our respondents might be slightly overworked. <coughs> to assess training and development, I asked my respondents whether they had access to basic training resources. Management came in first with the most access to training resources and even funding to get more training resources. Staff came in a fairly close second, but volunteers came in a fairly far third with only 10% or less of my volunteer respondents having any access to training and development tools. I also asked them whether they found these supports to be adequate, and the score came in fairly high. They said that their resources were either sometimes or often adequate, but the score was lower when I took it out just for volunteers. Moving on to organizational culture, I also assessed three variables. The first was job satisfaction. The second was management support, and for the third, I had them rate their organizational cultures. For job satisfaction, I asked two questions. First was whether they would recommend their organization as a place to work or volunteer to their family and friends. The response was overwhelmingly positive. 94% of them said yes. The second question, I asked them whether they enjoyed coming to work, 
And here, again, it was very positive. My respondents said that they always enjoy coming to work. For management support, I had to split my respondents into two groups. The staff and volunteers were rating the managers, and the managers were rating the executive directors. So I was able to compare how these two leadership groups were to each other. So the providing instructions element was have, came in fairly high. Managers were at about a 4 out of 5. But executive directors came in higher at about a 4.1 out of 5. I also asked whether they thought they were recognized for their effort by their management. And this again came in fairly high at about a 4.25, but the directors still beat them at a 4.45. Finally, with providing feedback, this came in with the largest discrepancy. Managers came in at 4 out of 5, whereas executive directors came in at a higher 4.45. The interesting here, thing here was that there was a statistical difference when I separated out the volunteers. Volunteers rated their managers at 3.6 out of 5, which is much lower compared to the other schools. For organizational culture, I used a similar rating tool using five different variables. The first was energy, how energetic my respondents felt after working the shift. Positivity was how positive they felt about their organization as a whole, and communication, teamwork, and helpfulness were how good they felt their coworkers were at being communicative, uh, team-oriented, and helpful. The first, energetic, rated in quite high at about a four out of five, <coughs> indicating that our respondents are feeling fairly energetic after their shifts. Positivity also ranked quite high. And but thirdly, however, with communication, this was the lowest score out of all five variables, coming in at 3.9 out of 5. Interestingly, this conflicts with um, findings by Amanda, uh, sorry, Amanda Wright. Executive directors and board rated their internal communication of their organizations quite highly, which is different than what we're seeing here. For the fourth, teamwork, this is also highly rated. And again, with helpfulness, this was also highly rated, indicating that our respondents feel fairly positive about their organizational cultures as a whole without looking at internal communication. In summary, I had a lot of findings about the nonprofits in our community. Some of these can be considered sustainable, some of them are not. On the positive side, my respondents had very high job satisfaction. They overall ranked their management fairly high in how well they were at being supportive. And third, managers were completely satisfied with their feedback. However, on the negative side, staff and volunteers were not satisfied with their feedback. And understaffing and volunteer training are inadequate. As well, managers ranked low in comparison to executive directors, and there appears to be an internal communication issue. In order to address these, I have a recommendation from my client, the Scotiabank Center. In going forward with the training programs that you intend to put in place, I believe that leadership is an important training topic. Feedback and instruction provision, as well as communication, are all part of the leaders and what they do in their everyday work. Furthermore, I think these leadership programs should have a focus on volunteers who are not satisfied with their feedback and many other aspects of their organizations. If we do not address these, we may have issues with retention and understaffing may become even more of an issue. We might even have issues with mission drift if the communication problem worsens. However, I think if we focus on leadership and on volunteers, we will be able to create a sustainable state within our nonprofit community. And we'll never have to imagine what it's like without organizations like Infant the Pool and Metro Community. Thank you. I'll now take any questions. research to um, support some of your quantitative results, but from your presentation it looked like um, predominantly quantitative information. Could you maybe just provide a little bit of insight as to what some of that qualitative information might have been? The qualitative focused a lot on the two research directors that I did not cover today. So that would be the financial resources and uh, the mission related activities and programs. So I asked them whether they thought their organization used their financial resources well. And that was an open-ended qualitative because it was a lot of perception of how money was used within their organizations. It was pretty positive, and usually any negative was because they were saying they weren't being paid enough. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, 
I did have one other question. Um, think about how to work that. Uh, you had uh, presented that there was sustainable and unsustainable, and yet it seemed like the numbers, although perhaps lower than in comparison to some of the work that had previously been done, they still seemed quite high. So did you have anything to support that from the literature, or, or was there any, any other reason why you actually categorized those as unsustainable? Specific things like understaffing. When I looked at the literature review, many organizations in Canada are advocating with, with understaffing right now because it's hard to attract uh, human resources to an organization when you have a limited budget to pay them with. So I wanted to focus on that, especially since I saw some of the negativity around staff pay. I felt it was an important thing to highlight. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jessica. Did you? Uh, can you Sort of take me through the structure of the nonprofits in terms of what they're whether they're full boards they're reporting to sides. Did you look at any of that? That was covered within Amanda's study last year, which is posted online, but I did not cover it within my own research. Okay. And uh, one interesting recommendation in terms of it looks like a disconnect between the executive directors who are way over on the right of your chart. Um, and you your recommendation focused on the volunteers in terms of leadership training for volunteers. Uh, what kind of Ran through my mind was that maybe there needs to be some work done with the executive directors in terms of their management abilities within their organization. So I'd just I'd like you to comment on that. What I meant was that the leadership program should be for management and for executive directors, but that should have a focus on how to lead and manage volunteers, not training for the volunteers okay. specifically, though they would probably benefit from that as well. Great. Thanks. Thank you. I just wondering the research objective around the financial resources. Can you just kind of tell us what was a sort of a unique finding around that, and um, how did it compare or contrast with um, the study from last year? So did it confirm things? Did it bring up some new areas of concern? My financial resources. I was focusing on how they managed their resources internally, and it was overwhelmingly a positive response from my respondents that they yes they do manage their money very well within the organizations. Interestingly, in the previous study, uh, external financial resources and where they got money from was not <coughs> as sustainable. So while they're using it great within their organizations, they could use some help with getting it from outside their organizations. Any other questions for Jessica? I'm just wondering when you were looking at the um, number of your HR indicators, whether turnover or retention rates were something you considered and whether that would show something slightly different than job satisfaction. It was hard to ask the volunteers and staff about turnover rates because we don't tend to know and because they were my response, but I did ask them how long they'd stayed with their organizations. And it was kind of bipolar in the case of volunteers, like they'd either been there more than nine years or less than two. So once you retain them past a certain point, you keep them. But there may be issues actually getting them into that from two years into nine. Thank you very much.